Welcome to Mr. Foy's Easel. As I've done so often in the past, I'm going to be drawing cartoon animals today, but with this particular angle, what do we do with our cartoon animals to sort of make them funny? Well, one of the things we do is to give to them human characteristics. Takes too long to spell that word. Besides, I might misspell it, but I'll try. You've all had a pet or you know somebody whose pet is just like one of the family. Well, cartoonists take that uh, even further. For example, in the posture or just general attitude of an animal. For example, dogs like to take naps, but in cartoons, a dog taking a nap might look like this with his front legs, or shall we call them arms, behind the head, sleeping away. Now, as you can tell the, from the cartoonist's point of view, uh, we don't just have a dog sleeping in the normal doggy fashion, we have him lean back just like his owner uh, might do when taking a nap. Well, what about, oh, let's say a duck out on the pond, which is perfectly in character with his duckness, but have you ever seen a duck? waving his arm or his wing, telling another duck perhaps to come on in, the water's fine. I've told you this a number of times, but cartoon birds, their feathers and wings turn out to be fingers and arms uh, in certain situations. So here's a couple of human characteristics, the way this dog is sleeping and a duck waving at another duck or some other critter. And what about a wild animal like a bear? A bear in real life can be pretty ferocious, like this bear here with, with his uh, teeth showing. But in a cartoon, it's just as bear character just as likely might look confused about something. Uh, I, I wager you've never seen a bear at the zoo or anywhere else, you know, uh, s scratching his head with a puzzled look like this as if he's thinking, uh, now, where did, I, where did I leave my pot of honey? So, well, by the same token, you might think about a rabbit out in the wild. Somebody asked him a question about something, and the bear doesn't know the answer. I mean, rab excuse me, the rabbit doesn't know the answer. Well, what does this indicate when a human shrugs like this? It, it usually indicates, don't ask me, or I don't know. So all of these critters that I've just drawn or drawn parts of are sort of acting uh, like human beings. Furthermore, in a lot of comic strips and other uh, cartoon features, uh, we'll have a, an animal thinking. You know, I suppose that animals, both domestic and wild, uh, have some form of thinking, perhaps, uh, but uh, not like this. Like this little guy here. It's supposed to be a mouse. I hope you can, I've drawn him pretty small. He's thinking, I wonder if there's cheese 
in the in the kitchen. Well, I doubt very much if we little critters like that think quite in that manner, but in cartoons they do. And not only do they have thought balloons like this, but they might talk either to other animals or to human beings. For example, let's go down here and let's have a dog profile. And his master is reading the newspaper and it's it's time of day when he usually takes his dog for a walk. So in this cartoon, why dog says, let's go. He knows it's time for the walk and he's talking to the human being. I ought to point out to you that in some cartoon strips where you have animals and people like Garfield, it seems that uh, the animals and the human can carry on a conversation. Well, let's take a short break and return and talk more about the use of animals in cartoon humor. Okay, we're still talking about animals and uh, certain things that cartoonists do to them to try to achieve the right effect as far as humor is concerned. Animals wearing clothes in cartoons. Now, a lot of times uh, animals wear some clothes. They're partly dressed like maybe like Donald Duck. You know, he always wore a shirt but never wore any breeches. But here's an example of a, a cartoon character. He's an alligator. And uh, of course, another thing I should have pointed out is that in cartoons, mu much of the time the uh, animals are, are standing on two legs. And once in a while, they'll have on a funny hat. <laughs> so. Presumably, the addition of the hat, as well as the alligator standing upright, is a, a type thing you might see in a cartoon strip. Or you might see an old rooster like this. Decked out in a sport jacket or sweater, whatever this is but no pants, kind of like Donald Duck, and on and on. You have a lot of, well, Porky Pig is another one along with Donald Duck, who maybe wears a, a little bit of clothing at least. Now, having talked about human characteristics applied to cartoon animals, let's shift a little bit you know that various animals have certain characteristics, and sometimes the cartoonist takes advantage of these, whether they're uh, really true characteristics of the animal or just something that we've uh, begun to think about uh, they're having. Let's take a look. I'm using a dog again, but this time I've got his owner. Uh, I'm going to draw him first. His owner is a hunter, as you can tell here. He's got his gun and he's out in the field. And his dog, here's his dog right here. I wanna tell you what kind of dog he is in just a minute.
You guessed it, he's a pointer. So using something like pointer and then taking a, making a cartoon twist to it is uh, likely to happen in cartoon strips. It's as if he's saying, there it is, whatever the game the dog is pointing toward. Well, supposedly dogs are frequently a nuisance, if not a real threat, to postmen. So here's a way I might show that. This dog is looking, looking out the window with a kind of an angry expression on his face. And here's the postman who looks a little bit leery of what he sees there in the window. So this, this type of cartoon humor is derived from the uh, stereotype of dogs and postmans being enemies, you might say. And of course, there's always the theme of the chase, predator and prey. And that makes me think of this mouse up here because if you remember the cartoon, uh, animated cartoon, Tom and Jerry, now I'm not trying to draw either Tom or Jerry, but there's always a, a chase with the mouse being the, the prey, or if you want to call him the chasey, <laughs> and uh, and the cat close behind. Incidentally, uh, a lot of times, even in a chase like this, which is kind of natural for cat and mouse, uh, they're running upright just like human beings. So, by the way, uh, as a rule, when you have a kind of a bully predator and a smaller, meeker, uh, hunted animal, a lot of times the, the little guy ends up on top and the cat ends up on the bottom. Well, there are of course other things that we could say about particular animals, like a snake, for example. The fact that the snake has no hands uh, the cartoonist might have this snake going out for donuts and coming back like this. <laughs> so watch for these things. It might be fun to identify some of the recurrences of animals acting like humans and animals acting like certain animals are supposed to. Remember, you can contact Mr. Foy's easel at conwaycorp.com.